Okay. So let's um, so let's look into what is this praying tongues, praying in tongues, all about. You know, there's a lot in scripture about praying in tongues. So we don't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be something very mysterious, something that's, you know, uh, very secretive. It's uh, there's a lot of information uh, in the Word of God. So once we know this, it will actually clarify a lot of misconceptions, right, or misunderstandings there could be about praying in tongues. You know, and it, and as believers, it will not only will we be helped personally, um, but we can help others understand as well. You know, whom we are ministering to, and um, that, that it is a wonderful uh, gift and something that uh, that would really increase, uh, strengthen the prayer life of a believer right so um, so yeah so what is praying in tongues okay when we look at scripture we see uh, acts chapter 2 that um, they were all filled with the holy spirit and began to speak in other tongues or other languages as the holy spirit gave them utterance okay so it is a language that i don't learn in the natural way Okay. When you learn a language, how do you learn it? You la learn it by, you know, you learn the alphabets, you learn the grammar, you learn the, you know, that's how you learn a language, right? Or maybe you listen to it and you learn to speak it. But so here we see that it is the Holy Spirit who gives the utterance, but we speak it, right? Holy Spirit who gives the words or the syllables or the sounds, but we are the ones who actually make the sound or we are the ones who speak it out, right? So, um, it's a language that is inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's a prayer language. We, we speak it out. Okay. But, but the Bible also says that it could be the tongues of men and tongues of angels. Okay. So um, if you look at 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 1, so this is what it says. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. So... Paul is, talk, is addressing the Corinthian church. So 1 Corinthians 12, he starts by saying, Brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant about spiritual gifts. Right? So they've been asking questions about spiritual gifts. So he says, you should have information. You should not be ignorant. Okay. So you should have understanding. So he starts to list down the gifts and all that. So he finishes. And then, uh, like end of chapter 12, if you look at chapter 13, he says, Though I speak with tongues of men, and of angels, but if I don't have love, then it has become like noise. Right? It's like clanging cymbals or sounding brass, so on. So this whole chapter is about love. Uh, it's about the place uh, or the higher road that love plays in the use of the gifts. Okay, So it should be with love. So that's the importance uh, of this particular, you know, this characteristic of love. And chapter 14, he continues by saying, first you love, desire, spiritual gifts. So he's continuing with uh, some more information on how gifts should be used. So um, when we normally read this chapter, you know, this is just an aside. Sometimes we think, okay, Paul is actually saying, um, don't give spiritual gifts importance. You know, prophecy, all these things, don't give it importance. Uh, love is what is actually important. Right? So many times we come to that conclusion. But Paul is actually saying, hey, these gifts are good. They are from God. It's to edify the church. It's from the Holy Spirit. But it needs to be used in the right manner. It needs to be used in love. It needs to be expressed in love. Okay? So that's the reason. for it. That's why he says, now abide faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Okay, Most weddings... People read that out, right? Greatest of this is love. And uh, and then they go on to make their vows, you know. Uh, so it's most, you know, read in most weddings, this chapter. But chapter 14 follows chapter 13. <laughs> Let's not forget that. So where he says, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. So anyway, so Paul is not in any way belittling the spiritual gifts because they are from God. They are for the believer. They are for the church. And it has a, you know, when God gives something, it is good. And it is for a purpose. It is. So he's not belittling it. Okay. But some, uh, you know, insight that we see here, that we receive here is that it could be tongues of men, which means a language that is spoken on the earth. 
okay, any part of the earth, it would also be tongues of angels, which means you search the, uh, on the planet, you will not find that language. It is a heavenly language. So tongues of men and tongues of angels. Okay, So it could be an earthly language. It could be a heavenly language. So Acts chapter 2, when we read, we read that it was something that others could understand. It was tongues of men. Right? So people have that question. No? If it's not tongues of men, if it's not a language um, that is on the earth, if other person could not understand, then it is not tongues. Then it is something that is, you know, that is fake. Uh, that's not tongues. That's not true, because it says tongues of men and tongues of angels. So it's a, it could be a supernatural. It's a supernatural language, supernaturally given by the Holy Spirit. We speak it out, but it need not be an earthly language also. Okay, so that we need to understand. Okay. So the Holy Spirit gives the words, but we, as human beings, we speak it out. Okay. And the other thing to see is that, the second one to understand, is that it is prayer that is enabled. Right? When we say enabled, it means empowered, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Okay. So we look at uh, Acts chapter 2 again, verse 4. And they were all filled with the Spirit, and began to speak other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay, so the Holy Spirit gives the words or puts these words in our spirit, but as human beings, we speak it out. We need to understand that. Okay, it's not the Holy Spirit speaking it out, but it's you and I speaking it out. So it's it's a spiritual, supernatural experience, but it's released in the most natural way. So sometimes you know, our struggle is that. Is it me speaking or is it God speaking? Of course it is me speaking, it is you speaking. But those words were inspired by the Holy Spirit. Right? Don't forget that. Right? So, so that's something for us to understand. So our spirit prays and um, we are enab uh, as enabled by the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's look at one more verse, 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 14. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. Okay, so your the human spirit, which receives these utterances from the Holy Spirit, prays, prays out. Right? Um, so that is what we see as enabled by the Holy Spirit. He also says something in that verse: my understanding is unfruitful. So what does that mean? Sorry? Uh, so that's a, you know that's a usage that is to say that I don't understand what I'm praying. Okay, he's saying my understanding is one Corinthians fourteen and verse fourteen, right? So he's saying my understanding is unfruitful, which means that uh, I'm not able to understand these words that I'm praying out, but I'm praying by faith anyway, right? So that is also another uh, something that challenges the mind of the believer, right? Like people say, if I don't understand, then how can I pray? Right? I should pray, and I understand the words I should pray. And uh, if I don't understand, then it's a waste, you know, why should I pray? But Paul himself says that, yeah, when I pray in tongues, if my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful, I don't understand it. Right? It's a heavenly language, it could be a language of, you know, a natural, I mean, earthly language. The Holy Spirit gives the words, I pray it out, I don't understand it. Okay, so if you don't understand, no problem. <laughs> it is biblical. It is scriptural. Right? Okay. So it's the third thing that we see is that it's a prayer language to pray directly to God. Okay. So, the, 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 you know, sometimes we um, primarily, primarily, you know, it is this. It is a prayer language directed towards God. So, um, Sometimes we have that question, you know, you're praying in tongues, you're speaking in tongues. Uh, I'm not able to understand, so it doesn't benefit me, you know. So primarily when you see, it's directed heavenwards, directed towards God. Okay, How do we know that? 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 2. Okay, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him, 
right? But in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. Okay. So it's very clear. I am actually speaking to God directly. I don't understand it. The, my neighbor doesn't understand it, but God understands. Right. I'm speaking to him, right? And he's um, he has instituted it that way that we speak or we pray in faith. Um, Romans chapter eight, verse twenty six and twenty seven. Hey, Romans 8, 26 and 27, we turn there. Um, okay, Romans 8, 26, 27. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So it's it's really wonderful, right? Sometimes I don't know what I should pray for because I really don't know what should be the end result of this thing. You know, what should be my choice? I don't know what I should pray for, right? But when I pray in the Spirit, when we pray in the Spirit, the Spirit makes intercession for us according to the will of God. So it is, in other words, it is the perfect prayer. Right? It is the perfect prayer. It is according to the will of God. And we are praying about so many things. We're saying, God, I do not know this. I do not know how to make this decision. I don't know, uh, you know what I should choose, what course of action. But when we are praying in tongues, we are praying the perfect will of God. Right. So, um, yeah, I remember once, um, you know, I, I, I think I shared also, I, I didn't know whether to stay in that job, whether to move out and take up another job just because of a product that we were selling and I was not comfortable with it because, uh, you know, it dealt with star signs, right? astrology signs. It was these soft toys. But the more time I spent praying in tongues, there was this knowing, there was this understanding inside of me, which is building. Right? I don't know what I should pray for. You know, should I stay? Should I not stay? But as I started praying more and more and more, uh, I realized that there was this knowing. At the end of it, there was this, there was, there was this solid knowing. There was a solid peace, and I could make that decision. Okay, okay, maybe I should, I should just move, and this, this knowing, this understanding in my spirit. Right? So uh, the Holy Spirit prays that will of God for us. Um, and it is in groans, right? When we look at Romans 8, it says that, uh, yeah, with groanings which cannot be uttered, meaning which groanings which cannot be uttered in articulate speech. It doesn't make sense. But these are, you know, and, and, and this, God, you know, if you think of it, think about it, God designed it in such a way. Let's say, you have a problem with anger. You have a problem with your attitude, okay? And uh, and God wants to deal with that. Wants you to deal with it, right? And uh, He wants to reveal that to you, but you're absolutely blank about it. But when you pray in tongues, when you're praying in tongues, and you you know praying about your anger issue or about your you know whatever it is about attitude thing is is the far furthest from your mind you don't want even to you know suppose somebody comes and says you know uh, brother you know i think you should pray about this attitude of yours you'll say you know please go i don't want to you know i don't want even to consider that you know, how dare you say that right uh, i don't have a problem we'll try to justify but when we are praying in tongues the holy spirit is praying lord deal with this guy's attitude let this attitude change. He's praying that perfect prayer. He's praying according to the will of God. Let him be refined. Let him be renewed. Let him, let him all these things be taken away out of his life. So I'm becoming more and more sensitive. I get up in one morning and I'm realizing that, oh, you know, I think there's a problem with me in this area. I think I need to change. What has happened? I've become more and more. There's a sense of knowing that God brings about in my in my spirit. You know, I didn't even consider it earlier, but then now. I begin to consider, yeah. So similarly, other things, you know, this is just one area where I need to change maybe, but there could be other things. Maybe God wants to take up 
wants me to take up something. God wants me to move in a certain direction. As we pray in the Spirit, we're praying the perfect will of God for our lives, right? So, uh, so we're doing that as we pray in tongues. Okay, what else? Praying in tongues is speaking mysteries. Okay, what is a mystery? Things that are unknown to me. So I don't understand. It's uh, I don't have the understanding mysteries. Now, 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 2 says, He who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. Okay? Things that have not entered my human mind. I've not got understanding of it yet. Right? So things are unknown. Things maybe referred to uh, things that could have happened in the past or maybe things that are yet to happen in the future. I don't have understanding of it or I don't. So in by praying in tongues, I'm actually speaking those mysteries. I'm speaking revelation of those mysteries because the Holy Spirit is praying that perfect prayer. I, things that I that I asking God, seeking God, and asking for understanding. I've been I'm praying the. We are praying those answers, those revelations. The Holy Spirit, you know, brings that into our hearts. Right. Um, so the word mystery also refers to wisdom, plans, purposes of God that are hidden right now, but God wants to reveal. Right. The good things, the plans, purposes. The things that have not yet, you know, I've not yet seen it, it's manifest in my life yet, but God wants to bring it to pass in my life. Right? So these are mysteries to me. These are hidden from my understanding, but God brings it, right? reveals it, unveils it, and He wants to do that. Right? Uh, so as we pray in tongues, we speak the mysteries of God. Right? So as believers, we need to pray more. Um, another thing, I think this is a question which was asked earlier. Praying in tongues is also referred to as praying with the Spirit or praying in the Spirit. Okay? Praying in the Spirit. Like whenever, like Paul was referring to an audience which was actually, uh, uh, which actually understood this usage, right? Praying in the Spirit. He says, praying in the Spirit. I pray with the Spirit. Um, so that audience actually understood it. So these, this was the church of that day these were the normal believers of that day so they understood it so what were they referring what was paul referring to okay let's look at uh, 1 corinthians 14 and verse 14 um okay 1 corinthians 14 and verse 14 it says for if i pray in a tongue my spirit prays but my understanding is unfruitful what is the conclusion then i will pray with the spirit and I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit, and I will also sing with the understanding. Otherwise, if you bless with the spirit, how will he who occupies the place of the uninformed say, Amen, at your giving of thanks, since he does not understand what you say? So he's contrasting two things here. Okay, And he starts by saying, I will pray with the spirit. I will pray with the Spirit. And, he's, and he says, I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit. I will also sing with the understanding. So whenever we encounter that, um, you know, uh, like we said earlier, in, in, in the Greek, the usage, you know, with, in, of, is used interchangeably. Baptist, baptized with the Holy Spirit, baptized in the Holy Spirit, used interchangeably. So whenever we encounter that phrase, uh, pray in the spirit or pray with the understanding um, or pray with the, pray with the spirit. It means praying in tongues. Okay, it means praying in tongues. Let's look at one more verse, Ephesians 6, um, which talks about the, the armor of God, right? um, the spiritual armor. Okay, Ephesians 6, verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end, with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. Okay, so here Paul is actually listing down the different pieces of the armor, sword, helmet, 
shield, belt, right? Everything. And you also list down uh, one important thing, which is um, praying with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. In the spirit. So in the spirit, with the spirit, he's referring to praying in tongues. So he's, yeah, he's saying praying in tongues is a powerful weapon. It's a powerful weapon. Right? It's like any other weapon that he's listed there, you know, a weapon of offense, a weapon of defense, is listed down, and and this is also praying with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, right? So praying in tongues, um, praying in the spirit, are used interchangeably. Okay, so some so sometimes uh, people might ask, you know, does it also mean that you are led by the Holy Spirit to pray, like with the understanding? Or you, the Holy Spirit gives me the information to pray. The Holy Spirit enables me to pray with, uh, uh, you know, with greater fervency and uh, greater zeal. Like I'm using language that I know. Okay, let's say I'm praying in uh, Tamil or English, whatever language that I know. But the, pray, the Holy Spirit is enabling to pray with, you know, zeal and fervency and burden. Uh, so is that also praying in the Spirit? Well, that is praying as led by the Spirit, definitely. But whenever Paul meant praying in the Spirit, it is praying in tongues. So we need to understand that. Right? Praying in the Spirit is praying in tongues, as per you know the New Testament church, the early church. So, um, so that is something that we need to know. We need to understand. Yes, the Holy Spirit can lead me to pray with the greater zeal. Holy Spirit can lead me to pray with a burden. Uh, all that is true. He can give me, you know, he can give me the topics to pray. He can ask me to, you know, put within me the prompting to pray for, uh, you know, that country and this city and this group of people. Yes, praying as led by the Spirit. But that is technically, if you look at Scripture, that is not praying in the Spirit, but it is a praying in tongues, which is praying in the Spirit. Right? Okay. Then we also see uh, that there are different kinds of tongues okay diversities of tongues or different kinds of operations but it's the same holy spirit um, so we sometimes think there's only one kind of tongues okay uh, and then that because of that that causes confusion so let's look at uh, let's look at you know what are the different kinds of tongues okay firstly we see tongues which is prayed or, or prayer in tongues um, which is used by the believer, uh, which results in personal edification, okay? which builds up the believer. Okay? Let's read uh, 1 Corinthians um, um, 14 and verse 2. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2. He who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. Go down to verse 4. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. So when you're praying in tongues, what is happening? Edification. What does edification mean? Is that sorry? What? Uh, setting aside is consecration, right? So when you say edifi edification, there's a building up. Like uh, when you use the word edifice, it means build up. So. In other words, there is constructive spiritual progress that is happening. It's something that is being built up on the inside. Maybe revelation has been given. Maybe certain things are taken out. Certain things are put in. You know, it's like it's like a spiritual exercise. You know, that you're in, and it's just building you up in the inner man. There's faith being built up. Okay. So uh, when we pray in tongues. Now, this is normally like we do when we pray in the Spirit. We spend extended time just praying in tongues. We are being built up on the inside. Now, this is for all the believers. Right? Every believer has this privilege to pray in tongues. Okay. Um, like uh, Mark chapter 16 and verse 17, the Lord Jesus says, These signs will follow those who believe. Okay. For those who believe, believers, disciples, um, in my name, they will cast out demons. 
they will speak with new tongues. Okay, so the Lord Jesus actually spoke about it, saying, they will speak with new tongues. They will cast out demons. And these are the ones who believe in my name. Mark chapter 16, verses 16 and 17. So this is for, when we say, okay, is this for all? Yes, this is for all believers. Okay. Then we see another kind of tongues. Okay. And let's look at 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 13. Okay. So here it says, let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. If anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be two or at most three, each in turn, and let one interpret. Okay, that's 13 and then verse 27 also. 28, but if there's no interpreter, let him keep silent in church and let him speak to himself and to God. Okay, so what is this kind of tongue? It is tongues for interpretation. And when we look at this, we see that it is actually someone who's addressing the church. Like suppose, you know, I'm here, right there in front of you. And if I give a message to you in tongues, right? If I begin to speak in tongues, uh, and then I, I just take, you know, take what five minutes to do that. I just continue to speak in tongues. And if you are there listening, well, Paul's instruction is, let there be interpretation, okay? Which means that uh, whether interpretation has to come from me, myself, who's praying in tongues, or maybe from someone else, the gift of interpretation of tongues, right? Someone will just interpret and say, okay, this is what the Lord says, right? So it is for a message that is public address of tongues. Okay, so what does he say, verse 28? If there is no interpreter, okay? If there's nobody to interpret, interpret, let him keep silent in church and let him speak to himself and to God. Okay, so sometimes well-meaning, sincere believers say, you cannot pray in tongues in church. Okay. You, at home you pray, but in church you can't pray in tongues. Now, now that is wrong. Because here he's talking about Somebody who's coming in front, coming to the podium, and speaking to the congregation in tongues. So in such a setting, Paul says, you should have interpretation. Because it's not blessing the person. You could be edified personally, but it's not blessing the other person. They are not being edified. So in such a setting, let him speak to himself. There also he's saying, let him keep silent in church. Okay. So what does that mean? He's saying... Let him not completely cut off, but let him pray between just himself and God. Does that? Does he say that? Right? Verse 28, if there is no interpreter, let him keep silent in church and let him speak to himself and to God. So which means you just pray between you, yourself and to God. Continue to pray in tongues. So can we pray in tongues in church? Yes, you can. Right? But if it's going to be someone taking the mic and you know, uh, giving a message in tongues, let there be interpretation. Right? Only then it will help the people who are uh, listening. Okay. Then there is also uh, now these are all the different facets of um, you know the benefits of tongues. Uh, also, if you look at it, um, there are also tongues for deep intercession, interceding for others. Okay. What is intercession? Praying for others, praying for various needs, praying for others. Okay, so this is Romans chapter 8, 26, 27. We saw, you know, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. We don't know what we should pray for, uh, but then He helps us. He intercedes. You know, what does it say? Verse 27. He who's, yeah, because He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Okay. So he makes intercession. So he's going to pray for others' needs. He's going to pray for my needs, which I don't even know if I have a need. right? I'm not even aware of it, but the Holy Spirit knows. And he is going to make intercession. How? When I pray in tongues. Okay, so tongues for intercession. Ephesians 6 verse 18. You know, he says, Paul says, Praying with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So there also it is 
intercession. You're praying for the needs of the saints, praying for the challenges faced by the saints, saying pray in the spirit. So this is tongues for interpret sorry, intercession. Right. And then tongues can also be a sign to the unbeliever. Okay. Do we see that in scripture? Yes, Acts chapter 2, right? So there are those who did not know Christ, but who are of the Jewish uh, you know, faith. They are there. And then they hear these people, you hear these disciples being filled with the Spirit and praying in their language, and they were actually praising God, right? Praising God in their language. So they heard it, and then it was a sign for them. And it was something that was, what is a sign? It is pointing to... Yeah, pointing to Christ, pointing to the supernatural nature of what is happening there. And it is a sign for those who do not believe. Paul also talks about that um, in um, you know, uh, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 22. It says, therefore, tongues are for a sign, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. So if people do not believe and they hear people speaking in their own language. You know, this happened... Uh, I mean, not to me, but uh, someone whom I, whom we know, like she is a very, um, uh, I would say, um, uh, very, very uneducated, not literate. She can't read and write. This person who's doing ministry, okay, maybe villages and all, and then people call her. She's, she's been to different places, and God uses her mightily. Um, so what happened was uh, she was called to some place in the north, and um, so she knows only one language, which is Tamil. Okay, that's the only language, but she can't read, she can't write, um, completely illiterate, uh, etc. Right. So she she was called for a meeting. Somebody arranged a meeting and everything, and the translator was not there. Okay, and they were waiting. He was delayed. So then they said, uh, "Sister, why don't you just lead in prayer? Okay, just go and why don't you just lead in prayer?" So she went and uh, she started praying in tongues. Uh, she thought she was praying in tongues. Okay, so she just started. Uh, I mean, for her, it was praying in tongues. She's prayed. So if she prayed for some time, and then the translator came, and then they started with the meeting. So when she finished and came back, so the person who was organized, he said, No, so you never told me you knew Hindi. And then she said, No, I don't know Hindi. No, but you but you prayed in Hindi. Uh, and she said, No, I I prayed in uh, you know, I prayed in tongues. I didn't know it was Hindi. She said, Yeah, you did. You prayed in Hindi for those that briefly you prayed in Hindi. So you see that it was a sign, a like supernatural sign for maybe those people who were there who did not you know, know Christ, but it was a sign pointing to the supernatural nature of the gift and also pointing to Christ himself. Right? So, so we see that it's a, it's a sign. Right? So we see that early church, they prayed. It was a... Uh, they were praying in other languages that they did not learn, and the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. utterance. Okay. okay, then we come to um, Anand's question about, um, you, know, you know, maybe there are specializations, doctor, engineer, right? Uh, so why can't gifts also be specialized? You know, some people use this, right? Okay, so let's look at 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 28. Okay, 1 Corinthians 12 and 28. Um, so Paul says, and God has appointed these in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues, different kinds of tongues, it says. Uh, then he asks the question, okay, rhetoric, verse 29, for which the obvious answer is no. So he asks these questions. Are all apostles? Answer is no. Yeah. Are all prophets? Answer again, loud answer, no. Are all teachers? No. All all workers of miracles. Then he gets into this area. All are all are workers of miracles. Do all have gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Then we are stuck. Right. If do, all don't have, which means only some have. Which means if I don't speak in tongues right now, then I should just come to the conclusion, maybe 
you know, this this question that he's asking, I'm part of that answer. No, all don't have, I don't have, therefore, you know. But the thing is this, Paul is actually talking about ministry appointments in the church, right? He's talking about apostles. He's talking about prophets. He's talking about teachers. And in the same, uh, you know, in the same verse, he's talking about these gifts, which are ministry appointments, which means just like how not all are apostles, but there are some who are God has appointed to be apostles. There are some whom God has appointed to have that as a prevalent thing, as the predominant thing in their life, that workers of miracles. Like this is how God wants them to function. Maybe tongues, you know, all different kinds of tongues, tongues for intercession, maybe call them as intercessors, and God is appointed these in the church, and that's the thing that God wants them to do. Right? Just like apostle, just like prophet, just like teachers, he's appointing these workers of miracles, he's appointing these varieties of tongues, right? Um, you know, we just conclude, we're just inferring that it could be intercession, right? It, so uh, it may be some for the interpretation of tongues. So he's talking about ministry appointments there. Okay, so, well, who decides this? God decides this. Now, I can't appoint myself. God appoints some to be apostles. And he says, okay, I want you to be an apostle. I want you, I want to appoint you in the body. Okay, if you look at um, the last verse of that chapter, but earnestly desire the best gifts, and yet I show you more excellence. Wait, that's how chapter 12 ends. Right? Chapter 12, verse 31. Look at how chapter 14 starts. 14 and verse 1. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. So these are some things that are for all believers. But some are called and appointed by God for a specific purpose and ministry. Now, just like how we read in Ephesians 4, we read about the fivefold ministry, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Now, it says that not all are called for that. So the question is this, are all apostles? No. But can people do what apostles do? Pioneer a work, plant a church. Yes. Are all evangelists? No. But can all believers evangelize? Yes. Can all are all prophets? Obvious, obvious answer, no. But can believers prophesy? Yes. So are all called to pray in tongues? Obvious answer. You know, he's talking about the ministry yet. Yeah. But can believers Pray in tongues. The answer is yes. And that is why he says, pursue love, desire spiritual gifts, which means everything that he's talked about now. He's saying, desire it. You know, if I desire without any surety of that being manifest in my life, why should I desire? If I'm going to be disappointed over and over, why should I desire? If that is not God's will. But God's will is that we walk in it. It is the expression of the Holy Spirit. We're going to learn about that you know, when we talk about gifts. So this is God's will. This is God's desire. Okay. So when we're talking about 1 Corinthians 12, 28, and then you know, Paul is talking about specific ministry appointments. So we need to understand the difference right, between that. Okay. So the question again. So if that is the case, can every believer pray in tongues? Yes, it is for every believer. But do all believers pray in tongues? Because no, I was a believer for so many years, didn't pray in tongues. Right, so many years. One, I thought it was not for me. Secondly, there was no teaching that I could pray, expect, right? So I didn't even have faith. See, when with the God's word comes faith, when you receive God's word, Automatically, faith happens. So when I heard the teaching, hey, this is for me. It is God's will for you to pray in tongues. He has poured out His Spirit. This is the, you know, this is the evidence and all that. Then faith built up in me. Then I said, oh yeah, oh if it's for me, then I want it. You know, I've, I don't know, so many years I've not really, you know, I've not pursued it. I, I didn't even, you know, go after this. But now I know, and God, 
I need it. I want it. But the thing is, in my mind, there were so many wrong ideas. Uh, I didn't know that. I thought, okay, it'll just happen, you know, that it's not me speaking, but it's just Holy Spirit. So I don't know what it was, but I didn't really start praying in tongues. So it took another six months from the time the person prayed over me. And then, you know, um, finally I started uh, praying in tongues on my own. Uh, I think I shared with you guys, right? I was, it was not in church. It was in Bangalore traffic on the way to meet a, you know, a client. I was working for this company. So on the way, Bangalore traffic, full mask, helmet, bike, I started praying in tongues. So, so that's the thing. Yeah. Anand, you have a question? Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. He started praying in tongues. While sung, okay. In a, okay. No, no, he started singing in tongues when he was in a, in a concert. Okay. 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 The question is, why? Why do you consider that as blasphemy? Why? What is the doubt? Um, <laughs> but he's a believer. He's a believer. Yeah. So if he's a believer, he's sealed by the Spirit of God. Spirit of God indwells him, okay, indwells him, right? So all that is true, right? So he's a believer, he's a new creation, uh, washed by the blood of Jesus. You know, think about all that. You know, he might not be, he might be a carnal believer, right? So uh, for the online class, you know, the question was, okay, uh, there's a friend of uh, someone here, the student here. So um, the question is that uh, he used to sing secular songs, not really worship songs, but a believer. Secular meaning film songs, huh? okay, cine songs. And um, so during the course of conversation about prayer, he started praying in tongues. So is that valid? Is he blaspheming? Um, so that's the thing. So here's the thing, you know, like he's a believer. He's washed by the blood of Jesus, uh, which means he's sealed by the spirit of God. Uh, he's a new creation and all that, you know, when we talk, about, he's that. He does not know it, maybe. Maybe he's a carnal believer in the sense the things of God are not important for him you know, yet. Right? For him, he's just. But regarding this praying in tongues, it's something that he did not desire. Right? So he, in the course of a conversation, and uh, what was the conversation about? Like, okay. Okay. Bring. So what did you did you ask him anything? No, was he surprised? Um, you were surprised. <laughs> okay. So, uh, but what he, was he surprised about that? He didn't answer. What did you ask him? Right. In these words. No, no, no. What did you ask him when he started praying in tongues? After that, did you did you refer to that? Okay. Correct, correct. No, no, no. Uh, my question is: uh, Was that the first time he prayed in tongues, or do you think that he he had been praying in tongues with you? Okay. So we don't know whether he was praying in tongues earlier. We don't know that. Okay, okay. I got it. So, so he's a tongue talking. <laughs> I mean, praying in tongues. Believer who's in the secular thing is sold out to city music and all that. Okay, so God is working on him. So we need to find out how did he receive that praying in tongues. We need to find that out. Okay, how did it happen? When did it happen? Um, you know, was he singing for some Ganapati? You know, kind of a thing. Okay, it's love songs, right? Yeah, so we just need to know under what circumstances 
did he start praying in tongues first? Okay, we need to know. And the interesting thing is that both of you started praying for this prayer request and he started praying in tongues. And he was not surprised by it, which means that he's used to praying in tongues. Only thing is, he's a maybe he's not interested in the things of God, you know, for whatever reason. You know, his focus is not on God. Maybe there are some addictions, maybe there are some things, but he's a child of God. And obviously, you know, going by this, he started to pray. When you said there's a prayer request, he started to pray. So he's sincere. He has a heart for God. But he needs to just be sold out. He needs to be guided. That is all. But it'll be interesting to find out how he received praying in tongues. No, that's what we need to find out. You know, if, if we, we need to find out the source. Like, how did he receive this praying in tongues? How did it happen? Right? Uh, so that is, a, that is something that we need to find out. Like, maybe he was in church, maybe somebody taught, so maybe. Yeah, yeah. then, um, absolutely. Then maybe he, uh, slowly you're giving me all this information, okay, <laughs> and says that he was a pastor's son. So anyway, so maybe, you know, there was a time in church, he, he received, you know, during the worship time, whatever. So the only thing is, he just needs guidance to come back. So maybe he finds me. See, music is his gift. Uh, he's drawn to music. Um, and uh, yeah, he finds uh, city music interesting. You know, maybe he finds Christian music boring. He just needs to have a change of, you know, renew his thinking and everything, and, and he'll be fine. So you just need to get back to him and continue that conversation <laughs> with, uh, yeah. I'm saying because I was such a believer. You know, I was a believer who was so carnal, um, but praying in tongues, right? Uh, Monday to Saturday, living a carnal life. Sunday, coming back and struggling and finding myself okay. And then again, going back. So it was like that for many years. Right? But... I continued to pray in tongues, and that kind of, you know, just brought me back to God. That kept me sane. Right? In the sense, uh, I didn't want to pray, but sometimes I'll just feel like oh, this is all I can do because I don't even know what I'm praying for, but I can pray at least. You know, I can just unemotionally just pray in tongues. And this whole message of who I am in Christ, right? Uh, this whole message, sin shall not have dominion over you. Oh, I'm living in sin, but this is what God, what, what of God says. Uh, 1 Corinthians 5, I mean, 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 20, 21, it says, okay, um, you know, he, he who knew no sin made him sin so that I might become the righteousness of God in Christ. Okay, you know, I, I don't know uh, how I can become that, but I believe that. So that kept me sane, right? And then just began to, uh, you know, continue doing that. And that brought me back. Because the thing is this, you know, Spirit of God indwells us to put to death the things of the flesh and lead us back to Him and make us Christ-like. Sometimes we think, okay, I need to become Christ-like in order to have the Spirit working in me. It's ulta. He comes, He works in us, and He makes us Christ-like. So, but I'm glad you brought up that <laughs> question. Um, okay. Uh, when we pray for personal prayers, suddenly we see somebody whom we know, but sometimes don't know, with pain or in difficult. Can we say that the Holy Spirit is pointing? Yeah, uh, in all possibility, yes. Then you can pray for that person. Yes, Chaya. Yeah, you can do that. Okay, uh, I think that's all we have time for today. So we'll stop here. Um, thank you all. I'm, I'm again apologize for the uh, you know delayed start. Uh, we'll meet again next week. God bless. Bye bye.